So for m- many years, the Minnesota Fighting Vikings O-line ha- has been like, what about the O-line? What about the O-line? What about the O-line? It really has become the Vikings' Vietnam. It really is the unsolvable problem, right? So just throwing resources and men and material at it so hopefully it will be solved. There you go. And the Vikings spent uh, three uh, draft picks uh, this year, either 15 on offensive linemen. Yeah, second, uh, a sixth, and a seventh. Pretty sure that's right. Anyways, bring in Ezra Cleveland, left tackle of the future, pair him up with Garrett Bradbury, uh, as well as Brian O'Neill. Hopefully there'll be 10, uh, 10 pole players uh, for the next couple years on the Vikings offensive line. So uh, as he head into 2020, projections-wise, who's going to start? Who's going to be on the rooster? Uh, we're going to take a stab at that today. So we're going to divide this into two categories. A, the offensive line that I want. B, what's probably going to happen. Yeah, so, so we'll dive into all that. So what we're going to do, uh, teams usually keep about nine offensive linemen, between eight and nine offensive linemen uh, on the 53-man rooster. Uh, yes, it will be 53. Uh, the misnomer is that it's going to be 55 is that there's two flex positions that basically you can bring a practice squad player onto the roster with, with, a, with no muss, no fuss. It doesn't matter going down that tangent. But uh, he, here is our uh, what we want the offensive line to be. So, as you can see, it is a full-on youth movement up front. Uh, yes, Riley Reef does remain, you know, just like that uh, spaceship in Independence Day after they nuked it in Houston. But uh, Ezra Cleveland, starting the clock, left tackle, right away. Uh, yes, does need to size. Yes, does need to improve his anchor a little bit. But start the clock, you know, get, get the thing going on him. Yes, live through some growing pains. But Ezra Cleveland, Brian O'Neill, just the two most athletic tackle pairing uh, in the league. Let's get this thing going. Let's get this party started, baby. Woo! Also, uh, I think he'll switch numbers to 76 after Aviante Collins gets cut uh, because he wore 76 uh, in high school and college. But numerology podcast coming soon. Uh, the aforementioned Riley Reef. Kicking inside the left guard. Uh, ding dong, Fat Elf line is gone. He is gone. He is gone. He is gone. Yeah. I, I, I'd much prefer this pairing. Uh, again, getting Cleveland experience at left tackle as opposed to putting him inside at left guard, where I, I don't think he necessarily uh, has the anchor uh, inside. He doesn't have it outside. Certainly does not have it inside. And, you know, Reef. I like the. I think Reef at guard and Cleveland at tackle is a better pairing than Reef at tackle and Cleveland at guard. If that makes sense. Uh, the man in the middle, Garrett Bradbury, year two, right to rock and roll. Right guard, Drew Samia, has already been sort of penciled in as the the future starter at right guard. You know, if Ole Udo outperforms Drew Samia in camp at OTAs, whatever semblance uh, that's going to be this year, I wouldn't be mad if, if you had Udo starting over Samia at right guard. I, I really wouldn't. Uh, right tackle as well, you got Brian O'Neill, stud, one of the best young right tackles in the game. Uh, swing tackle, uh, so you got six-round pick Blake Brandell coming out of Oregon State. Uh, I After re-watching him a little bit, I, I do think that he does have potential to be a, a decent swing backup tackle uh, in this league. Uh, I would bet on his youth over uh, Rashad Hill because you kind of know what Rashad Hill is at this point. So have Brandell on the roster. Uh, plus the aforementioned Oli Udo uh, can play some tackle as well. Same thing with Drew Samia. Uh, that's the nice thing about Samia and Udo is that they're projected inside the guard, except they do have some tackle flexibility. Uh, also at center, um, backup center. So you got... Uh, Kyle Hinton, who they're going to try to move uh, from college left tackle at Washburn University into center. Now, I think this is part just to give him experience at center as well as he's going to be playing inside either at guard or center uh, throughout his career. So it does make sense. Plus, you got Brett Jones uh, in there as well. So you do have... Blake Brandell, the swing tackle backup. Udo, who could play the guard spots as well as tackle. And then you have Hinton and Jones, who could play all three interior offensive line positions. So uh, for your nine, uh, th- that's a nice little grouping uh, there. So now we look at what will probably happen. All right, so, yeah, it, it's uh, basically chalk, like the old Denison conservative, just like w- w- whatever. Like coaches will always favor veterans almost to a fault just because well, they're familiar and they know the scheme. Hence, uh, Riley Reef at left tackle. Pat Elfline remains. And also, uh, I think the more truncated that the offseason gets, like no rookie camps, maybe no OTAs, um, limited training camp, I, I think that Pat Elfline, the chances increase uh, that he could remain on the roster and also remain a starter uh, in, in the final year of his rookie deal. So he's still in at left guard. I, again, this is not what I want. This is probably going to be uh, Garrett Bradbury at center. Right guard, not Samia, not Udo. Dakota Dozier, uh, who stepped in for Josh Klein a couple games uh, last season. Uh, Dozier also has some center flexibility, played center week 17 against the Bears for the most part. So 
Nah. Uh, then also Brian O'Neill. At least they left Brian O'Neill. Like, honestly, if this coaching staff had their druthers, they'd probably bench Brian O'Neill for Rashad Hill. Right. Uh, so then uh, your backup tackles, you got Ezra Cleveland having a redshirt year, uh, as well as the marvelous Rashad Hill. Just remains. Just still there chilling. Uh, you got Brett Jones as your swing uh, interior offensive lineman backup. Plus, you got Samia on the bench. Now, you could put in Udo. You could put in Samia. You could do whatever. But, yeah, in this scenario, it's just really... It just really sucks because Udo, Brandel, uh, Hinton all on the practice squad. I, honestly, this would make me apoplectic. I, if it went down like this, I, I would be extremely disappointed. Uh, and, and also, I think they just like wasted a great opportunity here. But uh, that's it. Uh, that's our projected uh, offensive line for the 2020 Vikings, both what we want and probably what we're going to be. Man. All right, so your thoughts uh, on our projections, let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. If you want to support the work, post on the Venmo. Please give us a follow on social media as well. But until next time, Skull, production value.